I thought uh, my theme and uh, what I wanted to talk to you to say that we gather here in order to learn how to help others in times of distress and times of suffering and to cure, as it is termed. And um, I felt uh, maybe when, when we try to cure somebody, um, if, if we don't have the big picture, of what is disease, of what is health. We are lost sometimes in details. So therefore I wanted to talk about uh, the um, the idea which I once had about a healthy human being. You see, I received that when I, when I was writing back in uh, how many, 40 years, 50, 50 years ago, when I was writing the science of homeopathy, I had uh, an idealistic idea of what could be the ideal health of a human being. And uh, though I knew it was not possible to attain such a state of health, I, I thought it would be good to put it down as uh, a definition of health. So what was that definition? I felt that when somebody, I was thinking, I remember myself thinking, when somebody is not having suffering, is not having pains, that's, is that good enough? Then I said no, because I have seen patients with no pains, but they are, they are depressed, they are without energy, etc. So I thought, okay, to have no pain, but to have uh, good energy, positive energy, joy. And then uh, I saw other cases, and they had uh, this feeling of having energy and uh, having no pain, but at the same time, where the slaves of uh, different kinds of passions. And uh, I thought, what is an ideal person who has, uh, who has an ideal state on emotional level? And I felt that at this was uh, a state in which uh, one feels really love, but not love for a specific person, not love which is attached and depending on a particular person. It's love which can flow and can leave the person in a state of serenity, of calmness, of joy, but an inner joy which is not dependent on uh, another person, another human being, on an or oh, oh, whatever. Because I have seen how disease was produced. Disease was produced when on this level, on emotional level, somebody is attached to somebody else, 
to that extent that they feel that they cannot live without this person. My mother, you see, my father, my girlfriend, my young wife, my son, my daughter. And I felt that pain was produced by this attachment. Once something happens to the other person, gives so much grief. My brother, whom I loved so much, has died, and I cannot tolerate it because I was depending on him. I was attaching myself, my whole, I was a slave of my passion. Never mind what kind of passion. Once you are attached, then pain is necessary. One time or another, something will happen and you will be disappointed and you will have pain. And once you have pain, something happens in the organism. Within seconds, I felt, that changes the structure of the whole body. And in a spare of a moment, when you hear the bad news, the whole world is is destroyed for you. That means, that means disease is produced exactly on this, on this way. That means the physical body is following the impact that comes to the soul, to the emotions. Follows immediately. In which way? In a way which is which is almost purely energetic. And then you see we know that uh, the main the building blocks of life are energy fields. We know now for sure because physics and especially quantum physics, as you heard, they have come to the conclusion and to the proof that the building blocks of everything that exists behind this in the subatomic level there are fields of energy. And, and what we had to do, we had to, in order to pretend that we can cure a person, it would be to, to be able to reset the organism that has been destroyed by the shock, by the emotional shock. And this way has not been found until Hahnemann brought out the idea of the vital force. The vital force of Hahnemann was exactly what physics, quantum physics today have found out. Behind our structure, there are fields of energy. So when we get a shock, it's an energy, negative energy, which destroys the whole organism, can destroy. And immediately, then the little devils like uh, bacteria or uh, viruses or microbes are starting developing in a destroyed structure in which we had. So we lost, we lost, we lost our uh, health suddenly from one moment to the other. Why? Because we had such an attachment 
as human beings, we, we had a, such an attachment to material things in life. And we lost that. I lost my car. You see, you may, you may lose something immaterial, very insignificant, and still if you are attached to this, you can be destroyed. So, so the idea was for us to bring back the organism to a normal balanced state. By what? By a remedy that was simulating, that was imitating the pathology that has de developed after the shock. And was it possible for a human being not to be attached to anybody? The answer, of course, is no. There is no possibility. There is no possibility that there is a human being that has no attachment to somebody else. Therefore, we are all prone to have a shock, to have a problem when our object of attachment is destroyed. And sometimes is unbearable, sometimes leads to death. You see, so much pain is there that from one moment to the other, there is a heart attack and the person is gone. So, so Hahnemann has given us the possibility to intervene in such a state and just to give one drop, one remedy, one little pill and reset the organism. Even at the moment of, just before the destruction of the organism, if you manage to give the correct remedy, the organism will receive the information, the information which is positive, and counteract the negative information which you have. And we have separated these remedies, and we know such remedies are uh, Nazo Muriaticum and uh, Ignacia and Sarisagria phosphoric acid and Arnica, etc. And many other remedies, and not only this, but, uh, but um, you see, the, the problem, the problem does not end there with the human beings because we have a part in us which is the intellect and which is our spiritual part. And how disease is produced if our spiritual center is attacked. And how a spiritual center is attacked? There is one only way, and this is our ego, ego, ego. I am important, I am clever, I am this, I am that, and somebody challenges this, and somebody tells me, you are stupid, you are nothing, you are do not, and then I am destroyed. So ego, the more the ego develops, the more we feel we are important and uh, in the world and uh, I can cure, you see, I can cure. People are coming and uh, kiss my hands and feel uh, you are such a great person and, uh, and then I believe it, but I forget that I got an information from somebody who gave me the possibility to do that. I did not discover it. 
I did not do anything specific for the world. I just followed the information that I took from somebody else. And I applied correctly. And that's why I was able to cure certain cases. And uh, then uh, the destruction can, uh, can be such that they, you, you know very well that uh, such people are led very easily to self-destruction, suicide. And uh, so if we see disease really, we cannot see it anymore as a physical problem. So what has happened to the world? If we go back 10,000 years back, 20,000 years back, and we can imagine the humans, how they were, how they lived, how they died. And we find out that uh, during this time, humans, they were living, let us say, 35, 40 years, and then were dying. Why they were dying? why they were dying. Because, because somebody has created this world. We don't know who has created, but there is definitely created this world. And this world was created initially with the possibility that we have life, we live a life, and then we die. That is, that is the, the general plan. Of, of our uh, nature, of our, of our race, human race. But why these people were dying so early? See statistics, they say they were dying very, very, very early. But statistics do not take into consideration that some of these races, some of these people, were living quite to the old age. So what was there? What was happening? What's happening? What was happening is was that the natural thing was to happen was a, a, what they call natural selection. We had natural selection. That means an, a weak organism was uh, attacked for certain reasons by the bacteria who developed by the microbes, and there was no way of facing that condition, and people were just dying. So by natural selection, the most healthy the most uh, strong people survived. Now, what has happened? The humans, the human minds, we have found ways to counteract this disease process. But how is that? How, how, um, how we thought we could do it? You see, being, uh, being um, humans with no spiritual view, no deeper understanding, we thought that the human body is everything. So we thought we fixed the human body and then everything will be fixed. And then what happened when we found ways to not to reset the energy fields, 
of the human organism. But we found ways to influence the physical body. The physical body. So that trend continued over the years. And, and what was happening? Why Hahnemann came to the conclusion that there were th three biasms? He had recognized by that time in 1800, 1900, he has recognized that there were some actions of the humans that the, the, these actions were not according to natural things. They were, they were people um, who gone astray and were affected by very virulent uh, nosological agents <coughs> like, <coughs> like gonorrhea, syphilis, etc. Who came my wife? I have to be careful. I have to be careful what I say because she's uh, a very, how can I say, is somebody who criticizes very, very objectively. She's the only person who can see me objectively. <laughs> Everyone else sees something else. Okay. It doesn't pay any attention now, so we can talk about it. Um, so what, what I want to say is that see, see the importance, see the importance. Instead of finding a way to reset the organism, what we do with interfere with the physical body, having a repercussion upon the energy body. So therefore, we manipulated without understanding the, the energy body, the fields of energy that are our building blocks. We affected them, affected the energy by giving to the physical body poisons like, like any poison, any poison, if it, the poison is in, in big quantity, it will kill, okay? So the, the medicine, the, far, the, the medicine in, in Greek is called pharmaco. Pharmaco is, um, is the, the poison is the word for poison, pharmaki. Pharmaki is the poison. So we gave the poison, but not enough to kill, but just to see what the organism is going to do. So we follow this structure, this idea, that we can deal with the body, with the body problems by using, by using poisons, but anyhow, I, I want to give you the overall idea of what we are doing, why you came here to learn. You have come here to learn how to reset the energy field of the body. The energy field of the body, that's for sure. Now we have also the seal from physics, it says energy fields, fields of energy are the building blocks, the building blocks. And you heard of my previous uh, discussion that uh, I had, okay. So therefore, therefore, the whole human race has taken the wrong path by doing what? by patching up the physical body in its 
suffering and in these wounds, patching. But letting the soul and the intellect and the spirit to be to be untouched by such medication. So therefore, no, it's the wrong expression. By by pushing some of the problems of the physical body to the soul and to the spiritual part. That means destroying on a deeper level what consists a real human being. So therefore, therefore our feeling when we treat a, a case should be should be understood as a, a, an answer for a distraction, for a distortion of an energy field. Because we forget this in the moment that we have in front of us a real physical problem, we'll, we'll, we'll think I will give a remedy and then the, uh, the pain must stop or the cough must stop or the uh, problem must stop. Instead of having the idea of what, what do we expect from our remedy? We expect that the first thing that they feel, the patient will feel, will feel a sense of balance inside, not the pain. The pain may become more, but if the feeling is inside, that there is, there is a better energy condition, then the physical problems will be gone. So, so from natural selection, we came today to the condition where the human beings do not die physically, but they die emotionally and spiritually. Because the wrong way we have treated the human race, it was gone, the disease, on an emotional and an spiritual and intellectual and mental level. So we have produced societies that are disturbed emotionally and mentally very deeply. But you will see in your practice, some people, you give a remedy, just one remedy, and the whole organism comes back and you see total reset and says, oh my God, this is like a miracle. And then you battle with other cases in which you find very difficult. You follow one remedy after another and you give another one, etc. And, uh, and because we are not aware, we are, we are not aware all the time that what we are dealing with is an energy complex behind what we see as physical problem. Behind it is an energy complex which is more and more complicated because of interference on the physical body through generations after generations. We have produced, therefore, a human race which has been affected through, through thousands of generations with a wrong way of treatment of a wrong way of 
surviving. We managed to survive and to have today seven and a half billion people living in the in the uh, and uh, and uh, who is really healthy out of seven and a half billion? No one. Others are very, very ill. Others are less. But almost no one has a real, ideal health. Because if we had somebody with ideal health, somebody who is not suffering on the physical body, but also he's serene on the emotional level, and at least not so egoist on the mental level, we have a human being that then can judge, can understand what must be done in the world. Unless we have that serenity, unless we have this, um, this, how can I, this attitude to give to others, then what happens? The, the opposite, that means the unhealthy attitude, is to take, not to give. I take, I take, I take, not give, not any. I found a nice source of information with uh, somewhere. Eh? I get this information for myself. I don't diffuse it. I don't tell anybody. I will get the information myself. Because if I tell to somebody else, also somebody else will have uh, uh, the knowledge and will become a competitor. See the attitude, uh, I, I mean, if we check out ourselves and check out our patients, we will see how much of their suffering deals with these issues, deals with these issues. A lot of what is happening today in the world, all the wars, all the atrocities, all the destruction, all the suffering, all the grief, all the, it's a matter of health which has gone the wrong way. Unhealthy individuals who are dealing with our lives as governors, as prime ministers, as uh, dictators, as whatever. But if there was a dictator, you can imagine a dictator with such qualities as I mentioned, who will not follow him? Because he will always care about others. He will always care for giving, for supporting, for... Yeah. You see... <laughs> Many people accuse me for saying, oh, you like Indians, you like Indians, because I lived in India. No. I like Indians, why? You see Mondi, the Prime Minister of India? Who knows Mondi? Who knows Mondi? Oh, sorry, so few. Mondi, the Prime Minister of India, is a, such a person, approaching the person with a, Total health, caring about India, it has transfer, transformed India, tries to transform. It's not possible to transform uh, India. India is uh, one and a half billion people, you know, the, but uh, he tries. He tries, but whether, if there is a, gov a governor, if a, there is a person 
who, who really has these ideas, the society will kill you. Our society is such, so structured that such a leader will be killed, will not survive politically. You see, so I feel that my wife is gone, yes, okay. <laughs> you see, I feel, I feel if they have not killed me so far with all these things I'm talking, that means I'm on the wrong path also. You see, because if I was on the right path, I would have been killed. So how can I survive still? You know, in spite of the fact that uh, different astrologers in India, when I was young, they were predicting <laughs> my death, they will be 67, one and 71, the other 80, the other 84, it was the maximum they said I will survive, etc. And then I said, oh my God, you say, I'm most probably I'm wrong, something I'm doing wrong, so the society has not killed me. Because uh, I think I'm talking correctly. I think I talk about the right way of treating people, you see, etc. Okay, but the idea, the idea is that uh, that we are really the pillars of the medical society. Even we are pillars which sometimes are limping, you know, or not uh, st standing straight and, uh, but uh, we try limping or whatever way, we try to do some good for the humanity. You see, I consider, for instance, especially the previous seminar, where people were mostly coming from very far countries, most of them, what kind of sacrifice they have put in order to be able to find or to learn a right method of treating people. So once you learn this, then, then the next thing that you have to do is to, to give it, to give the knowledge to others. You see, this is the idea, not keeping it to yourself, neither using this knowledge for becoming important. Hmm? But it is so difficult what I ask from myself and from you. So difficult to eliminate, to eliminate the ego. To eliminate the ego and to, to give uh, without asking anything in return. This is very interesting, very interesting. I'll, I'll tell you my experience. I, I was 30, 40 years ago, I was asking for a, a place where people could come and learn. And uh, as an idea, I thought uh, it would be nice, like having a place like this. I've, I thought about this in the 70s. And in the 80s, 10 years later, I was offered the money to have this build, built. I was offered it in the United States while I was there. 
a pharmaceutical company came and said, we can give, you can give us 10 prescriptions. You are the best. So you know the best remedies for each case. Give us 10 prescriptions. And uh, we spread it all over America for influenza, for headaches, for premenstrual syndrome. They mentioned 10 pathologies. We'll spread it, and uh, they have calculated how much they will learn, etc., and said, for you, you just write down 10 prescriptions, and you will have, by contract, seven and a half million. I said, very nice, but I cannot do it. He said, why? Why? I said, because I teach something completely different. What do you teach? I teach uh, that this is wrong, what you are asking me to do. I cannot do it. Then they talk, talk, talk. I said, OK, give us one prescription, and we'll give you 10 million. I said, never mind. He said, the same thing, you don't understand. You see, I cannot do it. You understand? I like, you don't want to have your school? Yes. OK, we give you the money to have the school immediately. You can have a school. I said, in such a school, nobody will come to learn. Because everybody will know that George says one thing, but when it comes to getting the money, he does uh, another thing. So we'll never, never such a school flourish. So you can forget it. OK, that, that was very interesting because, first of all, what happened, just to see the importance of staying in what you think the correct way you should stay. What happened is, after a few months, this man who was doing the deal fell sick with polycythemia vera, very, polycythemia vera, very, very aggressive type. So he fell into a comatose, semi-comatose state in the hospital. I was back in Greece, and they called me, one of my students who was attending his case, and he said, such such a man as is in the hospital, is dying, could, could you prescribe? What are the remedies? What are the symptoms? Yes, give him, give him one dose of uh, like a cyst, one M10, I can't remember. The man in one week, if I remember well, he went out of the hospital and recovered fully. Then this man who was pressing me to take uh, the millions, he said, uh, he asked the doctor, he said, what did you give me? I gave you one remedy, one time, etc. This is the result. Is this what George was talking about? Yes. This is what he was talking. You cannot give a prescription with 20 remedies and take it for polycythemia vera. He says we must bring him to America to permanently to stay here, so you can you can learn. You Americans can learn. He says okay. They tried to raise money for me to go and stay in America for uh, years. He could not raise the money because he knew me. <laughs> so he had to give the money himself for me to go to America for three years on a contract to teach American doctors. You see, once you stay in the right path, then everything will happen. So the school happened 20 years later, or 30 years later, but it does not matter. It, it happened with the, in the right way. You see, 
So this is something which I want you to understand that how important it is for a homeopath not to ignore his conscience. Not to ignore his conscience. I feel this is right. You see, I have students who were very enthusiastic. Uh, they were learning, etc. They went back. They became successful. And then the ego was so great that they wanted to do something of their own. So they gave up this difficult path which I teach, and they find easy paths, and they started teaching others the easy way. My students, what happens? Disaster. Disaster. I don't want to tell you more details now, but about cases. You see, so it's very important that when you have learned a system which you go and apply it and gives you results, that you don't go away from this. You don't, you, you don't out of the ego, uh, you want to, to, to go further and to do something um, impressive, etc. You can go along the lines, and you, we have a lot which is unknown in our areas, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, need for research to find out. But if you start saying crazy things and uh, promoting, on the name of homeopathy, crazy things, then I consider this as a crime. Because not only you give a bad name to homeopathy, but also you bluff the patient who are thinking Something is happening, etc. That's why I'm so critical. I, I, you know that I am very critical about uh, this nonsense which are going on, and and sometimes I ridicule things like that. But I do it with great effort. I don't want to do it. But if I don't speak out, I will let things degenerate into something which has nothing to do with homeopathy, finally. And uh, the whole world will accuse me. He says, why didn't you speak? So Hahnemann has given all the information. I got all the information from Hahnemann, Kent, and some of the old masters. This is from where I got the information. And because now I'm living on this world and, uh, and um, I feel that uh, I have understood what these people were teaching, I transfer this to you as, a, as an information. But your, your obligation is to do the same. You see, don't keep it to yourself. The more you give, the more it will come to you. You cannot imagine. I have seen people trying to, to diffuse, to diffuse uh, the, uh, the teaching, and they become so happy and so fulfilled and also affluent in uh, money and understanding and, and the more you do it with a pure heart, the more 
things will come upon you as a blessing. So it's very important. You see, there are, today there are medical doctors here from Germany who are coming for the first time, and most probably when they hear me talking in this way, they say, well, what are you? I can understand that they have their, uh, their objections. But, The fact remains that homeopathy can treat diseases that conventional medicine cannot touch. And I come now to another, to another area for homeopathy, which is the research for homeopathy. You see, as you know, we cannot do research with a double blind study in homeopathy. We cannot give a remedy to 100 people and then this will cure 100 people. Forget it. This is, doesn't exist. We have to give a remedy individually for each individual case. Okay? So what we can do is to present to the conventional medicine journal, medical journal, to present our best cases, cure cases, that were given up by allopathic medicine. You see, this is very important, this is very important at this stage, that when you have good cases, which are confirmed by laboratory examinations and all the, uh, all the contemporary possibilities that we have for confirming a diagnosis. When you have such cases, you can write them and we can help uh, uh, the academy can help in writing such cases in order to go to uh, medical journals. Not to homeopathic journals, but to medical journals. Because uh, at this moment, the big, uh, the big resistance of what we're doing comes from the medical profession. The medical profession are threatening it, and therefore, they are not doing it with, with bad intention. He says, what nonsense, they are giving remedies diluted to such an extent that there is no, not one molecule in, in the thing they give. And they pretend and they tell us that this will, uh, will, will you are the, the case. It's, it's natural to think in this way because they have been trained in a different way. They don't realize that these building blocks of life, which are fields of force, are affected by this uh, process of potentization of remedies, which is, which is a kind of a miracle which happens, but <laughs> what, uh, what they come and they will say, okay, uh, we'll bring you 100 cases of cancer, cure them. He says, we cannot. We don't cure cancer, we don't cure. We cannot say we cure any disease. Because, why? Because for homeopathy, we have a limit will say, if the disease has progressed beyond that limit, then it's incurable for homeopathy. So if they bring us all the cases beyond the limit, of course, the effect will be nothing. 
But before an organism reaches the limits and become incurable, much before, there is a possibility. And this is where our um, most of our abilities to cure our line in the beginning stages of chronic conditions and in the acute conditions. In the beginning stages, if we can prevent, if, if, we, can, uh, if we can give it in time before the organism has been totally destroyed, what happens? What happens now? I will give you another understanding of mine of the of the energy fields. These energy fields that we have, we are living on. In in uh, certain cases, they become so confused, so mingled that the balance of the organism is totally lost. You see, as long as there is a balance within disease, then we can cure. Once this is lost by interference, and what are the interference? The interference are mostly in our societies, mostly start with the babyhood, when they give 10, 20, 30 vaccinations. You see, they, they attack the immune system. We call it immune system. It is it's stupid, but anyhow, we have some idea what's the immune system, okay? We have some physical idea what is. But we attack that system with 30, 40 uh, vaccinations. This is crazy. In order that the system will react to this and will produce antibodies. And the confusion of the defense mechanism is such that already the baby, when it, when it comes out with allergies, with with asthma, with neuromuscular disorders, etc., it's very difficult for us to cure already from babyhood. So there is no organism who is left uh, intact for us to to act upon. That is why the best cures we have are people who are coming from countries that they have no vaccination and no money to pay for contemporary drugs. These are the cases, South America, India, Pakistan, and, uh, and all the poor countries. All the poor countries who do not have the possibility of having a lot of vaccinations and a lot of drugs are the best the best samples for homeopathic treatment. All the rest is so difficult, okay, that when we say we cure a case, what's a cure? How will we define a cure? How do you define a cure? We have some symptoms, and the symptoms are gone. Is a cure? No. So what is a cure? It's a cure. In our understanding, it must be a global cure. That means feels mentally, emotionally, and physically better, or in a tolerable state than before, globally. Not to when the physical problem has gone only. Okay. But even then, due to the 
conditions on which we live. Is it possible that anybody, anybody, will live in a surrounding, in a in an environment which is nice and not aggressive. So we live in an aggressive environment with a lot of demands, with a lot of competition, with a lot. So even if we brought the organism to a certain state of good state, you see, they stay in one year, two years, and they say, oh, here is, I have a relapse. Why do you have a relapse? Oh, because of my boss has discharged me because I lost my mother or because I lost my boss. Then my father, my boss. I had a shock. I had a, And what is interesting is just connect the idea with the old people dying from acute conditions. Eh? 10,000 years ago, getting a fever and dying, okay? This was the idea. That's how they died, except of the uh, accidents. The idea was that they were dying from a kind of uh, an infection. That's why the, the people died. So what happens with the homeopathic treatment? If we are successful, we bring the organism to a state of an old condition, of a um, centuries back in condition, where the organism reacts now again to the bacteria, reacts to the viruses, reacts to the microbes that they were killing the old people, the ancients. And what happens when you treat a case that was not able to raise a fever for many years because of vaccinations? Now, after treatment, there is fever. The organism starts responding to bacteria, and uh, then you have to treat this case again with homeopathy. Otherwise, the person will go back to taking allopathic drugs, will take again cortisone and antibiotics, etc., and the whole confusion of, of the immune system will, will come back. And the chronic manifestation will come again. So if you connect, if you see the whole picture, the, the, the human race, how they develop, what happened out of us, in, in the, the last stage in which we are now, especially on the West, especially Europe and America and Canada and all these countries. What happens is we do not get any more acute diseases. We do not get epidemics, children's epidemics. We don't, it's, uh, they disappeared. They think this is, this is good, but now they will find out that inflammation is a way of strengthening the organism and will live alive only the strong organism. Inflammation will come and fever will come and fever will make people die, yes. An old man with, uh, uh, with pneumonia, yes, will die, okay? Even with homeopathy, will die. This is the way that the organism dies because it gets weaker and weaker in, in, in its structure. So homeopathy will 
bring you the immune system to a good condition, and while you're feeling good, then that time the acute will arrive. Like in the old case, because this is the process to die. Otherwise, we will never die. Everyone will stay forever. Can you imagine what happens? How many trillions of people will be living in this country, in this uh, planet? You see? So we have to die. But the, more, the, the, the most important thing is that we, we die, we die in, a, in, a, in a kind of healthy condition on the mental, emotional level with awareness. Now it's my time. I will die. I accept death and uh, call the children and the grandchildren and say goodbye. I'm leaving now, and uh, don't worry, everything will be all right. You know, they, this, these are the healthy people. How they die, the healthy people. The others, they put them in, uh, make a vegetable. Uh, the prime minister of Greece, the one, Papandreou, I don't know. You know about, you know how he died? No. He had, uh, he had um, a heart replacement. He had a liver replacement. He had a, a dialysis for the kidneys and a, a ventilator for the... Oh, all these machines were working, working, working to keep him alive. Uh, what, what, what is this? And I hear, because he was one, once he was my, my patient, before he became a prime minister, before he became my minister, he was very sick, and he came to me, I treated him, and he became the prime minister. But he was saying to his wife, to his, please take out all this, let me die, let me die. Because he was living in hell in this life. He was living in hell, in hell. It was terrible, the condition in which he died. Because he had the topmost medical attention, attendance. What is this? You see, when, when somebody Somebody is his time to die should come naturally and without fever, fear, without fear. Now it's my time. It's okay. I have lived. You see the moment. Why? Why there is fear to die? Fear to die is because. Because we, we feel that we have not fulfilled the mission for which we came in this life. In this life, for each one of us, there is a mission. If we realize the mission, we do it, we'll die happily. If we don't realize, we are, we are in case of a cloud, like, like uh, some of you guys. Some of you guys in a cloud, and eh? never mind. <laughs> we are in a cloud. And then, of course, there is tremendous fear, tremendous fear of death. And now I'm dying. You see the aconite state, eh? Panic attack, panic attack. I'm dying now, I'm dying. I'm dying, I'm dying. Give the aconite, uh, and it laughs after three minutes. Who was here in uh, last year? Anybody saw the case? The case, <laughs> you were in front of the case, perhaps. 
Do you so? The effect of aquanite. And then aquanite. He said, three minutes later, she was laughing. She says, what happened to me? Yeah, it was nice if the whole class had seen it. But very few people were around her by this time. But uh, if, and this is very important, if everyone has seen what I have seen, I have experienced, homeopathy would be established. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.